Hi, this is Doug Young, and I'd like to share a little recording demo that steps through the mixing and mastering process of a solo fingerstyle acoustic guitar piece. One of the challenges of home recording is that we usually only have access to final polished mastered tracks to compare ourselves with, so it's hard to know if we're on the right track at the beginning of a recording. But what I can do here is let you hear the evolution of one of my own recordings as it progresses. I'm going to use a track titled While She Sleeps from my newest CD, Closing Time. This is a completely solo fingerstyle guitar piece, so the process is really pretty simple, perhaps a little different uh, from a more complex multi-instrumental piece. Before we dive in, let me quickly describe my recording setup. I used four mics, a pair of Shep's CMC6 mics with MK41 hypercardioid capsules, and an AEA R88 stereo ribbon mic, two mics in one. The Sheps were arranged as an AB spaced pair, about 15 inches apart, plugged into a Great River MP2H preamp, then into a Crane Song Head A to D converter. The R88 ribbon mic was set up as a mid side mic, and it runs into an AEA RPQ preamp, then into a MyTech Stereo 96 analog to digital converter. Uh, the RPQ is designed for ribbons and has both uh, low and high shelving EQs. So I cut quite a bit of bass and also boosted the high end of the ribbon mic during the recording uh, while I was tracking. Uh, so mic positioning, tracking, editing is a whole nother discussion, but I'm just going to start at the point after the basic tracks were recorded. Uh, oh yes, the guitar on this recording is a Kevin Ryan Mission Grand Concert made of koa and cedar. The tracks were recorded at 24 bits with a 96 kilohertz sampling rate. If you're listening to this on YouTube, keep in mind that the sound quality is severely compromised. I'll post the audio for this on my website in higher quality for critical listening if you'd like to do that. So let's get started by listening to the dry, raw Shep's track. We'll just listen to a few seconds. Now notice that the levels aren't uh, real hot. The peak amplitude of this additional track is around minus 8 dB, and the average is about minus 26 dB. Uh, we'll fix that later, but with 24 bits, we can leave plenty of headroom for later processing. This track is also slightly unbalanced, pulling to the left a little bit. Now let's check out the R88. So this track is also pulling a little bit to the left. The ribbon mic is deeper, uh, even with the bass cut and the treble boost that I applied during recording, and it's also a little bit noisy because of the gain required by a ribbon mic. The next step in the recording process was to make a copy of these tracks so that I never lose the original, and apply some noise reduction to the copy of the R88 track using Isotope RX, and I also did just a little bit of cleanup in Isotope RX of the Sheps track. Uh, removing a few little noises, squeaks, chair noises, and so on. Then I blended the two tracks together. Uh, the Shep's mic is the predominant track uh, in this case, and the R88 is a little bit lower. Let's hear how the blend of the two mics together sound. <laughs> bit louder, a little fuller than either mic set alone. Uh, the next step is to add some reverb. I used two separate reverbs in this recording, uh, a very subtle room reverb that just adds a little ambience uh, was the first reverb, and for this I used a Lexicon Native plugin. Let's listen to the track with this uh, room ambience applied. <laughs> By the way, the reverb is being applied by sending the signal through a bus, and I'm only sending the Shep signal to the reverb. The R88 is left dry. Now, the second reverb is a longer reverb uh, to add a little more obvious uh, sound of reverb, and for this I use a TC Electronic VSS3 with a hall setting and a reverb length of 2.6 seconds. So let's listen to the result. This is both mics with both reverbs. <laughs> That's pretty close to the final mix. 
Uh, the only remaining step in this case, the only extra thing I did, was to use an EQ plug-in on the master bus to knock off the extreme low end. It was just sort of a rumble filter. This is actually the first EQ and the only EQ that I used on this track. I dialed the guitar sound in with mic placement. There's nothing wrong with using EQ if it's needed, and I sometimes do apply it, but on this track, I was happy with the un-EQ'd sound. So all I'm doing is making sure that any low rumble from uh, motors, refrigerator, or whatever that's going on in my house is knocked out. Now, I also used on the master bus a UAD precision limiter, but with the limiter turned off, I'm using it because it has some nice metering based on the case system. I'm set to K14 mode, which means that the meters will show me as going into the red when the signal is actually only minus 14 dB, leaving plenty of headroom for mastering. So let's hear my final mix with adjusted levels ready to be sent on to mastering. Now, once I was done with my part, I sent the track to Cass Anawati for mastering. And this, of course, is one of the big mysteries. People often don't understand uh, what mastering does. And in fact, I don't know exactly what Cass did. But the most obvious change is that he brought the levels up to the final volume. But the track also sounds a little warmer, a little fuller, a little smoother. And part of the point of mastering is to let someone else, someone with good ears and a lot of experience, listen to the tracks and do whatever's needed. I like to think of it as a bit like having your car detailed. So Cass did whatever he thought the track needed to make it glisten like a brand new car. In any case, this is what Cass sent back to me. Now I got a little bit of a, an unexpected bonus on this track. A few days after Cass finished the mastering, he called to say he'd just gotten the new gizmo, the uh, Thermionics Culture Phoenix, and he wanted to try it on something he was familiar with, like the last project he'd mastered, which was mine. So he made a second pass through the CD with his new toy, and he sent me new mastered versions of everything. I don't really hear much difference myself, but Cass liked version 2 better, and his ears and his opinion is why I got him involved in the project. So I trust his judgment. So here's the final version 2 master, which is what got sent on to be included in the CD. So that's it from start to finish. Uh, to recap this, let me play you the progression of the track all the way through, back to back without me talking, so that you can hear the sound uh, as each stage, how it changes. Here we go. Hopefully you can hear the progression from initial take to the final polished track, and I hope it helps you visualize how your own tracks might evolve and understand how your project might sound at each stage. Good luck with your recordings. <laughs>